All right, welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today we start a new book, Joshua. And today's reading is of Joshua chapter 1 and 2. Now, you might be asking yourself, who wrote this book? Well, most theologians think it was Joshua himself, although some have put forward the idea that it could have been a priest or a scribe later on in Israel's history because he doesn't name himself as the author. Anyway, whoever wrote it, this is the overview. First five chapters is Joshua taking the people into the land of Canaan, over the Jordan into the land of Canaan. Then chapter 6 through 12 are some Canaanite wars, defeating the Canaanites that lived there. Then from 13 through 22, it's the resettling of the land, apportionment, and all the uh, intricacies involved with that. And then from 23 onwards, it's Joshua speaking to the people of God. So let's jump right in. Well, chapter 1, God uses this phrase three times. Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified. Be strong. Be courageous. For God is with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. And so variations of that three times Joshua is given that in the very first chapter. Now, we saw that at the end of Deuteronomy yesterday, didn't we? That our courage comes from not our own strength, not our own fortitude, not our own innate uh, lessons we've learned in the past. No, faith comes and, and courage comes and strength comes from knowing that God is with you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. Now, for us to do the things that God's called us to do, for us to go into our inheritance, we need to have that conviction. God is with us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. Makes us as courageous as lions. That's chapter one. Chapter two, Joshua is saying to the people, listen, we're about to go into the land. And so he calls a couple of spies together. Now, remember, he was part of the 12 spies that went out 40 years previous. He had seemingly learned his lesson, got rid of the 10, just picked two faithful men. Why? What did we learn from that? Well, public opinion is not a great way to run your life. Democracy, not a great way to run your life. You need to be surrounded with people with conviction. So he gets two with conviction, two filled with faith. He says, go into that land, particularly Jericho, fortified city. Come bring me a report. And the report was, God's given them into our hands. They're melting with fear. But I want to concentrate our talk today on Rahab, who is the central figure. When these spies arrive in Jericho, they find a prostitute. She looks at them, a pretty smart prostitute, and she said, you know, I know about you guys. You're coming to take us out, aren't you? Well, well, I'll rescue you, but please look after me. And so she hides them on their roof. She, she, she lives on the wall of the city. So she hangs a thread out of the window and allows them to escape and cuts this deal with them. She says, listen, when judgment comes, when your people come to take us out, please remember me. And they say, well, as long as you hang this scarlet thread, out of your window. We'll know you live there. And you can hide under that scarlet thread. Now, there are a couple of things I'd like to lift out of this story. Firstly, think about this. A Canaanite prostitute doesn't know God. And yet, God saves her. God uses her. And God redefines her. Well, how do you know that? Well, if you look at the rest of Scripture, she winds up in Hebrews 11. The people filled with faith. God used her, used her faith to save Israel, to, to take out Jericho. So not only was she saved hiding under this scarlet thread, she was used by God. And then if you go to Matthew chapter 1, she's in the genealogy of Jesus. Jesus chose to be born in the family under the line of the prostitute Rahab. God's totally redefined her from prostitute to mother in the faith. God takes people like Rahab, the discarded, the unwanted, the despised. He saves, he uses, and he redefines. What a beautiful story. I trust as you read it, you just marvel at that. But there's something bigger that I want us to look at. It's this scarlet thread hanging out the window. Some theologians have said there's a scarlet thread not just hanging out of Jericho's window, but running through every page in the Bible. You see, what is this point to? Where, where else was there a scarlet thread where if you hide under it, you saved? Well, it comes off the cross of Christ, doesn't it? And so it's, it's almost like God giving us a picture saying a scarlet thread 
running down the window of the most undeserving person in the territory. The prostitute, the village prostitute in the Canaanite village, there runs the scarlet thread. You hide under the scarlet thread the blood of Jesus and you will be saved. You will be used and you will be redefined. God bless you. As you read this chapter, I trust you get a lot, lot more out of it.